Hi, on this Excel on Mac video, I'm going to show you how to create a butterfly chart or it could also be considered a tornado chart. I guess the tornado chart analogy is probably more uh, appropriate because the butterfly chart is more symmetrical. A tornado chart, things kind of go all over the place. Now you can see with this particular tornado butterfly tornado chart, if I press the F9 key, it changes, right? And so that's kind of just some random between function I put in there. But let's see how we can create this from scratch. I'll just take uh, these values, control C to, well, see, I'll just take the whole thing and I'll change everything later on. Take that, control C to copy. Let's get a new sheet here. Control V to paste. Let's delete all these values and I'll do the same thing. I'll just take the headers here, or I'll just take the headers here, control C to copy, control V to paste. And this is what I'm going to start with. So my left value, which are these values here, that's my left value and that's my right value. And I'll explain the right value paddings and the gap later. So for my left value, my right, right value, I'm just going to make some random numbers between, double click that, 0 and 100. Command return to enter all that all those formulas into the cell, even though I only, only selected that cell and I selected everything. C command return enters the function into all the cells. So for my left padding, basically I want to take 100 minus that value. 100 minus cell B2, press return, drag the fill handle down there, or double click the fill handle, it will copy that down, so 100 minus B6 here. So that gives 41, 59, 41. Do the same thing for the right padding equals 100 minus the right value. Press return, double click the fill handle to bring that down. The padding is this area, you can't really see it, but if, if I click in the cell, in the, into the um, chart itself, there's going to be some area here that that padding is four. So item five here, you can see item five here. The value is 75 and the, the padding is 25. So there's this invisible 25 area. Same thing, if the value is one, that's one, but there is some padding here, 99. That is this, this uh, 99 uh, area, that value that it's kind of taking up that space there. And the gap here is that 25 here. So that's what those are for. So I'm gonna put 25 here. 25, press command return, that copies it all in there. I'm going to put this all in using a chart called the, let's see, let's look for it. It's going to be the 2D bar chart, and I'm going to do a 2D bar chart that's stacked. So once I enter it there, you can see that it's kind of created that chart now, but there's a lot that we need to do for this chart. First, we are going to rearrange the values here. You can see that Excel didn't really give us the right axes, so we're going to switch it. And now we've got our items here. What we need to do is we need to switch over the priority or the order that it's in. Right now you can see it's left value, right value, left padding, right padding, gap. We need to change that. Go under select data. And what we want to have come first is that left gap. So we're going to rearrange the series of data. So the left padding is going to come first. Move that up. So left padding shows up first. After that would be the left value. Now we want the gap in between, so we're going to move that into the middle. Right after the left value, we have our right value and then our right padding. Click OK, and it should change it. So you can see now we have the uh, be beginnings of our butterfly tornado chart. I need to get rid of my left padding, my gap, and my right padding. We can click and select that portion of the bar chart, go to format, and our shape fill, we're going to make that no fill. And also for the border, we don't want a border color, so we're going to say no outline. That gets rid of it. You can see it disappears there. Do the same thing for our gap. Shape fill, no fill, and no outline. And also now we're going to do that for the padding for the right. Let's see, yep, I don't need to click, click that drop down. I can just click that and that should disappear. And now we've gotten rid of that. We also 
don't need these grid lines. I don't really need them, so I'm just going to delete them. Select it. Yep, press delete, and now they're gone. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So what we need to do now is we need to have our axes for the bottom here. And you can, you can look at and see that it's not really right in a way. If we go back to sheet one, you can see I have my axes. Zero goes to potentially 100 here. Zero goes to 100 here, both right and left coming out from the middle. We want to kind of simulate that. And the way we simulate that is putting another series of data in there and also another chart type in there. So for our label, what we want to do is we conveniently had these at kind of quartile ranges, right? And so that's why we have our gap of 25 and it just makes it easier. I like to do the quartiles. So 0, 25, 50. So we want to kind of spread it out from the middle. So for our label, we want to have it come out from the label from the middle. And for our first portion, we want to start at, you can see we start at 75 and 75 at both ends. So we want to do the same thing there. So we have 75 here and then 50 and then 25 and then zero. All right, so that's going to be that's going to be the left side. We want to go to the right side, so we have to start again at zero, and then now increment by quarters: 25, 50, 75. Now the reason why you see this chart change is because this particular command is volatile. Anytime you kind of enter some functions or commands, these will also change. So if I just press the delete button a couple of times you notice that these change and of course that changes. That's what's happening there. So for my axes, I'm going to start from 25 and also increment up to up 25, right? So each increment is 25. I can just select that. So it, Excel is going to be smart enough to know once I drag this fill handle down here, it's going to increment each by 25, right? 50, 75, 100. I'm going to pull this in here. So this is going to be, this series of data is going to be another chart type. I'll select it within my area go under, oops, I think chart design, select data, and I'm going to add in this axis, right? It's going to be another series of data. So I will press plus and name. I'll just, I'll just use that name for my Y value. We're going to change that later, but just to get that there, I'll select cell A16 to A23. Click OK. And now it's kind of put it all over the place, but don't worry about that. We're going to change the chart type and we're going to have select that and go to change chart type. And we want to change that chart type to a scatter. And now it's put it over here. So we have our values here. We want to change that now. So I will select on that. Actually, I can just go to select data and look at my axis. And now I have my X, Y values. So my X value is actually here. So let's take that. And my Y values, delete that, are going to need my labels here. OK, and click OK. And now we've got the beginnings of our labels. So you can see that it, it comes out from the middle and goes up here and comes out from the middle and goes up here. And the reason why it does that is because it has put that those series of data, the values, there's a secondary axis here. And we want to have these all kind of flattened out. So you want to have that all the way down there and all the way down there because we want to just get rid of those markers eventually and just have the labels show up instead of having our 0, 50, 100, 150, 200 there. We want to have our zeros go to the left, 0 to 25, 50, etc. go to the left. The same 0, 25, 50 go to the left here. So to do that, we're going to take this axis and this, this secondary y axis and just give us some extraordinarily huge number. So right click, go to format axis, and this maximum value, let's just give it some bizarre huge number like a thousand. Let's see if that works. And it, hopefully it will flatten everything down. Uh, press return, close that, let's see what happens. Uh, still not yet. Well, let's give it a, let's give it another zero there. Right click, format access. Let's make it maybe ten thousand. All right. Press return, and now everything's kind of flattened down here. So it's, it's flat because 
these values, the, the biggest one is 75. Between 0 and 75, compared to a 10,000 10, scale here for my y-axis, it's going to make it pretty flat. So I don't need this axis anymore, so I'll just delete it, select it, press delete. Now let's see, select it, press delete. That's gone. And for these markers, I want to add a label now. So I select on them, and then right click, and I want to add a data label. By default, it's going to add to the, the numeric data label, the value there. So let me right click. Oh, we can't see our data labels here, probably. Let me move this. Move this a little bit higher here. Let's see. Let's see if I can move it a little bit up here. Yeah, and then. So let's right click and select on format data labels. And what we want to have is we want to have these below, right? We want to have them below to show that they could be our access uh, values. Close that. Let's get rid of our existing access. Select that, press delete. And now we have our axis. So now what we can do is get rid of these markers. Now we're not really going to get rid of these markers. I just selected them, right click, and we are going to format them. So we go out, go out here to Format Data Series, and for our markers, go to the Paint Bucket, go to Marker, and just say Marker Options None. So those have disappeared. X that out, and let's see. Yep, those are gone. Now let's bring this chart up a little bit so we don't see the legend here. So another thing that we can do to clean this up is maybe not have our labels here and put them in the middle. We're not really going to move these y-axis labels here. What we're going to do is this actually has the option to create labels. So we're going to select that box and put add data labels. And where are we going to get those data labels from? They're going to come from here. They're all 25s, but we're going to pretend that that is going to come from there. So once I select it, right click, go to Format Data Labels, and we can actually choose where we want those labels to come from. So instead of having the values, we want the category name. So we have a category name. And uncheck the value, uncheck the show leader lines. X that out, and we see we have our labels here. I can select the axis here, press delete, and that's gone. And it's actually kind of nice to actually have the line there. So let's add that back in, and we'll do something different. So let's go back, add chart elements. We want the primary, let's, I think it's vertical here, right? And where is our line? It's not there. Let's see if we can bring that back. So I select that. Let's move our chart up a little bit so we we'll see if we can see it. It's not there. Control Z to undo. So let me select my axis, right click, and we're going to format axis. You can't really see it here, but there's an option format axis. And let's see if I can find my axis line. Let's make a solid line. Let's make that black. And we can see it's come back. I'm going to close this and see what we have here. But we don't want these other extraneous values here. These are the original values that come with the access. And I'm going to kind of make, make those disappear. Select that, right click, go into Format Access again. And under where it says Number, let's see, under where it says Number, I'm going to add a custom code. Uh, right down. Under text, other, there's a special, and there's something called custom. So I'll select custom there. And the custom code I'm going to put are these four, or excuse me, these three semicolons. And what the semicolons do is it just basically makes the numbers disappear. They basically just no value there. So if you're familiar with the codes or the, um, the general number categories here, they're usually formatting for the numbers here that are separated by semicolons. So the first number is going to be positive number, second number is going to be negative number, third number I believe is zero, and the last number is text. Maybe we'll show it here if I click on the information icon here. And that doesn't really have anything for me. Too bad. 
Well, that's what it does. So we have, if you, if you just Google format code, um, Excel, semicolons, you can kind of get an idea of uh, how it is formatted. I'm going to click X to get out of here. And now we have our line. We have our access labels, 0 to 100, going to the left to right, or center to the left, and 0 to 100 going from the center to the right. The last thing I want to do is edit this legend. I don't need the left padding. I selected the legend, so it selected everything. Then I'm going to click it again to select it, just that part. Press delete. That's gone. I want my left value. I don't want my gap, so I'm going to select the legend, select the gap, press delete, and do the thing. same thing with the right padding. Press delete. Select the legend again. Select access. Let's see if that picks that. Press delete. That should be gone. And now I have my butterfly chart, right? So I'll just call this butterfly and it's finished. So we have our butterfly slash tornado chart. And anytime I execute my press delete button, since this is a random number generator, it's going to change that. But there you go. That's the way that we can create a butterfly or tornado chart on Excel for the Mac. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.